Hello, everybody. Welcome to the special edition mummy episode. Are you my mummy? No. You want not, my you're mummy? Not, you're not my mummy neither. No. Happy Mummy's Day? Yeah. Yeah. Mummy's yeah. Mummy's Dance. Well, this week we're going to be covering the four Lon Chaney Jr. mummy movies from the early 1940s. So it's not a, quilid, a trilogy, it's a quadrigy. Quadrilogy. Quadrilogy? Quadrilateral. What is the quadri- <laughs> quadruped? Quadrifi. What is the, yeah, yeah, there were four of them. Quadra mummies. <laughs> yeah. First, we'll look over the original 1940 movie, The Mummy's Hand, and the 1942 follow-up, The Mummy's Tomb. Then we'll hit up, hit up on The uh, Mummy's Curse and The Mummy's Ghost, both from 1944 in the same year. And thank goodness that did it for The Mummy movies, pretty much. And, or that, that series, anyway. They, and made, that, they made other Mummy movies and stuff, too, of course, over the years, but... I'm not sure, did they? Hammer? Well, they're, uh, oh, well, Universal? They, well, not Universal, no. No, yeah. but that that finished this batch and Universal's run because they were getting a little bit old and stretched yeah. out by the time. Yeah. <clears throat> As we'll see. A little bit. Well, in 1930-something, uh, yeah. we saw it not too many episodes ago, we watched the original Mummy oh, with Boris Karloff. That was 1932. Okay, 1930. A right. while back. Look, look, poster, poster behind us. Yeah, Karloff. Karloff. And a mummy. So well known, they didn't even have to use his first name. Just <laughs> Karloff. I think it was only his second big film after Frankenstein. Frankenstein, then this one. So, yeah, he was just a monster at this point. Didn't do much talking in the Mummy movie. Karloff. And it was a big hit. Mm-hmm. But Huge. Karloff had many other things to do, and he didn't really wasn't really all that interested in coming back for the Mummy. So they're like, who else can we get? Bela Lugosi. No, he's no. busy too. Yeah. Lon Chaney Jr. He's not doing nothing. Yeah, he'll do it. Mm. He'll do anything. <laughs> <laughs> And some of these were... Well, however that conversation went, but yeah, that's what they decided. Well, (laughs) The Wolfman was 1943, and the first one of these was in 1940, and the last one was 44, so I think his star didn't really rise until these were almost over. So, I don't know how big of a draw he was when these started. Man of 500 Faces. Half the man his father was? Well, <laughs> his, mm-hmm. you know, they say his, his father was a man of a thousand faces, and he, Lon Chaney Jr. had a lot of faces. He had a lot of different makeups. And so these four movies are all uh, made within four <clears throat> years of each, four or five years of each other, and they're all sort of interrelated, and they're all sort of not quite as related as they could be. Mm-hmm. Today, you got things like the Marvel, the MCU, where all the films are connected and interconnected and overtwining and overleafing, and they all mer- mix and match and merge. This was sort of like that, but there were some big gaps in logic between the movies. Yeah, they and, didn't and really the flow lines. together quite right. Like forty years would pass oh, between yes. the movies, but it's not in the future. It's still everything's still the same. Yeah, <laughs> most of these movies were like forty years apart, but they all take place in nineteen forty-two. Yeah, however that works. <laughs> 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 All right, so the first one up is The Mummy's Hand from 1940. Ah, Pre-World War I, on the American that, side at least. The Mummy's Hand. Ah. <laughs> Directed by Christy Cabani. Is that a man or a woman, Christy? I don't know. I'm assuming in those days it was a man, most, Probably. most likely, but not Don't know of a lot of women in the 1940s. There were, I don't know. There were a, a few. It was heavily. It was. It was a good old boys club back then. Yeah. Yeah. Written by Griffin J. Stars Dick Foran, Peggy Moran, and Wallace Ford, and of course Lon Chaney Jr., mm-hmm. who doesn't really get even top billing there. One hour seven minutes. Link in the show notes for the Amazon link. Mm-hmm. Well, a man on a fez rides his camel through the countryside. Still, we, we don't have, have fezes. fezes for these episodes. <laughs> Where's our fez? <laughs> no fez. Got a hockey mask over there. That's not quite the same. <clears throat> not at all. The old high priest of Karmak is di- Karnak is dying, and the man in the fez is here to replace him. The holy smoke. Hmm. Holy see smoke. what I did there. Yeah, I see shows did them there. a flashback showing Karas attempting to bring back Ananka back to life and getting caught by the guards. It's that same flashback story again. Yeah. Yeah. We see that in all of Almost them? all of these. Yeah. 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 In one form or another. Yeah. That, well, and that was part of the problem watching them all so close together. That got old. Yeah. I know this flashback already. I don't need to see the it. The Frankenstein again. movies didn't have 10 minutes of <laughs> flashbacks to the previous Frankenstein movies. But you were just the sort mummies, of supposed to know what happened. The mummies do. And, and they, weren't that, they weren't released <clears throat> that far apart. 
No, no. The, the Frankensteins yeah. were over a period of 20 years. These were These a period were, of five years. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Just mm. filler. Filler. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. They wouldn't make have made a whole hour movie otherwise. Longer. Yeah. Chorus gets his tongue cut out. Oh, and it's Chorus now. It was, uh, what was it before? The other mummy had a different name. Carmack. No. Karnak. The god was Karnak. The god was Karnak, which wasn't really, that was a city name. Imhotep. Imhotep. Yeah. Yep. This guy was Imhotep. Lon Chaney is uh, Karas. Karas. So, with him was buried a great quantity of Tana leaves, and then all the slaves that witnessed the burial were killed. For over 3,000 years, Karas has waited in a cave on the other side of the mountain. But Karas never really died. And the plant went extinct, so it's a good thing they buried a lot of leaves with him. The old priest shows the younger one the box that contains the Tana leaves. He explains the rules. Three leaves keeps Karas alive. But if needed, give him nine leaves to give him strength to fight the desecrators. Never, ever, under any circumstances, should he burn more than nine leaves, as that would be bad. And don't feed him after midnight. Yeah. <laughs> the younger man swears loyalty and the old priest dies. Great timing. Mm-hmm. Steve and Babe are in Cairo and are getting ready to return to the States. Abbott and Costello late. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. would have been... I don't, I don't know how big Abbott and Costello were in the 40s. You know, they were around. It, yeah. it wouldn't have taken much to bump up the humor. Would have taken and nothing. make it an Abbott and Costello movie. This movie was yeah, right on the edge much. of being a comedy. It was like mm -hmm. a comedy with a yeah. real monster. So yeah. it's a kind of a weird movie because of it. Yeah, a little bit. And I wonder if Abbott and Costello had anything to do with this. I don't know. They weren't mentioned anywhere. Well, no, I meant like they were going to be oh. written for them or something. And then they decided... I don't yeah. remember seeing anything on that. No, I don't. Well, these two guys are failed archaeologists. Steve checks, and they have $84 to their name, but he risks $75 on a broken old vase. They then go to the museum and get the marks on the vase translated. And it tells the location of Ananka's tomb. Hmm. Professor Endoheb says it's a fake, and the location it points to is the most dangerous place in Egypt. Don't want to go there. Yeah, he would tell them that, though. Yeah, the men mm -hmm. leave, and Endoheb reveals that he's out to protect the tomb. He is the man in the fez. He's the head priest now. Dun-dun-dun. Protector of the tomb. Babe hustles cards for drinks in the bar. Unfortunately, he chooses to try his hand against Solvani, the magician who entertains at the hotel. And there's lots of sleight of hand... You know, foolishness going on there. Mm -hmm. Comedy relief. They manage to convince Solvani to finance their dig. The Fez man's flunky starts a bar fight and steals something from Solvani. Mm. Then the Fez man slash high priest slash Professor Endoheb goes to see Marta, Solvani's daughter, and claims that Steve and Babe are swindlers. Mm, don't mm. believe those guys. And they're not really. No. <clears throat> the, the magician guy knows he's what he's getting into. Yeah. He's got more money than he needs, and he's just farting around having fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. Marta and Salvani have a silly argument where Salvani does tricks throughout. She's yelling at him, and he's pulling flowers out of his sleeve and rabbits out of hats, and it's silly. Mm -hmm. Marta takes her trick gun and tries to get the money back from Steve and Babe. Steve explains that they're going on the up and up, and she insists on going along. She takes her trick gun six-shooter revolver mm -hmm. and what did she shoot like 13 12, holes in the door 12 holes. i made a note of that yeah but it really is a trick literally a trick gun it looks like it has six bullets in it and it will fire 12 times she talked and she mentions that it's, it's literally a trick gun that's disguised they're magicians they can yeah. do this stuff yeah finally they get digging along with dr petri another archaeologist they find bodies and some remnants of an expedition here from two years ago However, the detonators go off too soon and blows a hole in the mountain. They've found the tomb. They open it up, and it's not Ananka. It's a man, and hmm. there aren't any gold or jewels here. They found Karas, and they find a bunch of leaves buried with him. Andoheb confronts Dr. Petri. Since you're here, I think you should see what you've stumbled upon. And he gives the solution of nine tana leaves to Karas. Mm. Karas then kills Petri. Yeah. Mm. Nine leaves. That's the magic number. The mummy has a limp a limp arm and dragging leg, and Endoheb says he can get more of the fluid to fix that by tracking down the vial he has hidden in Marta and Solvani's tent. It's kind of convoluted. Except he has that draggy leg and it doesn't Weak get arms fixed throughout all the movies. Yeah, it doesn't get fixed. The man Ali no. finds the vial, and then the mummy kills Ali. Later that night, Karas grabs Marta and goes back into the tomb. They go out the secret door in the back, and Steve shoots the beggar who is Endoheb's man. 
The beggar has an amulet that shows the location of the passageway. Karis then takes Marta to Ananka's tomb, where Andohib is waiting. Karis leaves as he needs a recharge. Bad timing. Mm -hmm. Andohib <coughs> wants to make Marta and himself immortal, like Karis. He explains, if Karis were to find the rest of the tunnel leaf fluid, he would become a monster the likes of which the world has never known. Because he'd binge, rather than just limit himself to nine. Like yeah. a Lay's potato chip, mm -hmm. tunnel leaves. Can't eat just one. one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Babe shoots Andohib dead, leaving Karis with no master. Hmm. Steve shoots the mummy several times with no effect. Yeah. They fight. The urn with the fluid is spilled, and Karis gets down on the floor to lick it up. Lick it up, baby. Lick so, it up. We watched the same movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a different movie. Steve then, then sets him. On, <laughs> Steve then sets the mummy on fire. Later, Steve is promoted to the head of the museum, and all four of them head home with the treasure. The end. Happy ending, and we'll never see Karis, Karis again. Nah, he, never. Yeah. Like it? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, it was all right. Yeah, yeah, it was okay. The comedy, yeah. I think, took away from it. It, it was not a co comedy yeah. movie, but there was an awful lot of comic relief in this. It was mm -hmm. maybe a little beyond the, two, the borderline the two of guys, silly. The two guys and the magician, and yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the story was fine. Mm -hmm. The characters were kind of dumb. A little bit too much. Yeah, a little too much, too silly. Yeah. Okay. okay, so it's a very simple story with simple characters and plot. The comic elements between Babe and Steve is unnecessary and made this feel like an Abbott and Costello movie. However, Abbott and Costello meets the mummy didn't happen until 1955, hmm. but it really did happen. Yeah. The film can't decide if it wants to be a scary comedy or funny horror, and it doesn't really succeed at either. This film introduces Karis, who is not the same guy as Imhotep, the Boris Karloff mummy. It also introduces the rules for the Tonalese. But it is the same guy. I mean, it is, but it isn't. The same story, same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it introduces the rules for the ton of leaves and the fact that the mummy can only be reanimated under the cycle of the full moon. There you go. Mm -hmm. It's also the first where the mummy drags one foot behind him all the time. Whenever you see like the mummy in the cartoons or Scooby Doo or something, he's always got that draggy foot to slow him down. And this was where that originated. Yeah, it is. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. And he still manages to get everybody. Like nobody can outrun him. Like they they freeze in terror and like you know back away and back up against a wall and yeah and he gets them. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, takes us up a couple years to the Mummy's Tomb, nineteen forty two, directed by Harold Young, written by Griffin J and Henry Sucher, stars Lon Chaney Jr. top billing, mm -hmm. Dick Foran and John Hubbard, one hour and one minute. These are still kind of slow, even with the long flashbacks. Did you like this one? I did, but not as well. Yeah. The flashback was excessive. I, I this one. Okay, I'm going to say right now, with the four movie. movies, best, worse, or worse, or worse. They, get, they, they went downhill mm -hmm. in a straight they line. Do. The fourth one is the worst. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. But this one, it's only an hour long, and they got the flashback again, which takes up a big chunk of the movie. It's like, it's come filler. on, show us something new. <laughs> The movie's I think that, only an hour long. I think that's the problem. With it. They All four of these movies are basically the same story mm -hmm. with the same conclusion. They're milking the uh, I don't milking think they had any new ideas. Yeah. Mm. This got old fast. Mm. And it's a little bit silly because this takes place, if you add up the years, it, the first one, The Mummy's Hand, was 1940, and then this is about 30 years later. So it should be 1970-ish, and yet it's everything is still 1940s. Yeah. All the technology, the clothes, the cars, everything. They didn't make any attempt. This one, they decided to go along. But yeah, mostly an entirely new cast for the most part. Uh huh. So instead of just, you know, saying, you know, the guys in the first Steve, movie died off screen or well, something. Stephen Banning, he's old now. Yeah. They, and he's flashing he's back and he's telling what happened all those decades ago. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, but it's still, everything's still 1940 looking. 40s, you know. Time passed, but the rest of the world isn't aware of it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Steve Banning from the first movie, played by Dick Foran again, explains the story of the mummy to his son, John. There is a way to, re this is a way to recap the previous movie, and there's a short flashback from the hand of the mummy. Banning has aged, and 30 years have passed, although mm -hmm. both films sort of vaguely take place in 1942. Mm -hmm. And there is at least one World War II reference in each movie. It's a really long Oops. war. Oops. 
The movie only is only an hour long, but the flashback slash recap literally takes 12 minutes and shows all the good action bits from the first movie. It's completely possible to ignore the first movie, skip the first movie and go to this. The The flashback shows so much, mm -hmm. it's you all really the good parts could, of the first movie. Yeah, you really could skip it. The first movie yeah. was a little over an hour, and this flashback is like the 12-minute highlight reel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Endoheb, who died in the first movie, Not really. is now old, <laughs> yeah. and he too now passes the torch to a younger priest. Again. <laughs> Again, yes. <laughs> yeah. The old priest, young priest. Yeah, thirty years later, he was he was dying of old age, and then now thirty years later, he's doing it again. Kara still lives, <laughs> and he's got the same mission. There's a new Fez man now in Egypt. Mehmet Bey travels with a large crate of relics from Egypt to America. This is new. The mm -hmm. previous movie happened in Egypt. This happened mostly in America. Yeah. He wears the mm -hmm. same amulet we saw in the previous film. He and Karas are out for revenge on the defilers of Ananka's tomb. Of course, in the first movie, they hadn't found Ananka's tomb. You know, and it's lucky, too, uh, I, a note that I made. Um, the old-timer brings in the new priest, spills everything to him all at once, and mm -hmm. says, this is your mission now to to wield this powerful mummy weapon. Oh, yes, sir. And kill, volunteer kill with anyone. my life. Yeah, and good thing he said yes. You know, and he <laughs> says, no, I don't want to. <laughs> Got to go find somebody else. Hey, <laughs> well, list, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> Not my fight. I don't want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mehmet Bey has already gotten a job as caretaker of a cemetery. Once he gets settled in and the moon is high in the sky, Bey burns the required nine tana leaves. Banning's dogs start going crazy as Karas climbs up the wall to the bedroom. Karas kills Banning. Karas returns to his tomb before anyone sees him. Bey tells him, only three more remain, and then we can return to the land which gave us birth. And this is kind of a slow revenge, too. It's been decades that all these treasures years. all these treasures were taken to America, and now, just now they're deciding, let's kill all these people that did this. And other than the <laughs> fact that Andoheb was maybe healing from his gunshot wound, it shouldn't have taken 30 years to come back. No. Nope. Karis was good the next day still. Weird. John goes through all yeah. banning stuff, and he can't find any enemies that would want to kill him. That night, it's time for another murder. The hired man shoots Karras twice and then keels over in fear. Karras then kills Banning's older sister, who had nothing whatsoever to do with Egypt. Just Still, she's a blood relative of the place, man who raided time. the tomb, so she was on the list. Mm -hmm. Sucks to be her. Yeah. The media is all over this, and the newsmen from around the country come to the town to cover the story. Babe returns to town for Steve's funeral, and he explains all the mummy stuff to John. Then he explains it to the sheriff, who doesn't believe him. Surprise, surprise. He explains everything to a reporter, but Bay is sitting behind them listening. Mm -hmm. That night, the mummy walks right down the center of Main Street. He finds Babe and kills him on the street. The forensic experts confirms that the strip of cloth and mud that they found actually did come from an ancient Egyptian mummy. Now the sheriff knows what to look for. Mummy on the loose. You see one of those come down the street, you may not pull it over or anything if you don't have proof. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. John gets his draft notice, and he's going to be a captain working for the Surgeon General. There's in our long-running World War II World reference. World War II in the 1970s. <laughs> he and Isabel <laughs> need to get married tomorrow before he leaves. Bay sends Karis to grab Isabel. Suddenly, Bay decides he wants her for his own immortal wife. Karis doesn't like the idea and almost kills Bay right then, but he turns and obeys. Karis grabs the girl and heads home. One man tells the sheriff that the caretaker over at the cemetery is an Egyptian. Maybe he's behind all this. Maybe. Could that be any more racist? Hey, I know an Egyptian. There's one down the street. He must be the killer. Well, the fez gives it away. People wore fezes that weren't killers, I think. Probably. Want to admit you admit to a crime? We're a fez. <laughs> the villagers gather in a mob with torches and head for the cemetery. Bay prepares the ton of leaves for Isabel, but before he can give it to her, the villagers arrive. He has Karis take her out back and hide while he deals with the rabble. rabble, rabble Bay rabble, pulls rabble. a gun on John, but the sheriff shoots him. The whole gang chases Karis down out back to the banning house. He goes up to the balcony with Isabel in his arms, but the villagers set the house on fire. John and Isabel climb down safely, but Karis is trapped and burns. Once again. We then see the burns newspaper and reports. Burned and you'll never see him again. Burned yeah, beyond gone recognition. Forever. Gone forever. 
We then see newspaper reports that John and Isabel got married, and then they get on the train and head to Washington. All right. Well, yeah. yeah. Slightly lower than the first one. Mm-hmm. They went all out bringing back actors and characters from the first movie to literally pass the torches to the next generation. This time, they've forgotten all the comedy nonsense. It's almost as if they wanted to do a reboot, but had to make this a sequel for some outside reason. Like, yeah, let, let's do the next generation. We, we screwed up the first one. Let's start again. Mm-hmm. Lon Chaney Jr. Oh, you notice how we didn't mention Lon Chaney Jr. much? Yeah. He was the mummy this time. It could just as easily have been Bob from the accounting department. I was going to make a mention of that, too. He's unrecognizable. What a waste of a star. Yeah. Unrecognizable, doesn't yeah. get any lines, and is always shot in the dark. <laughs> the makeup looks kind of good, but then again, that could have been anybody inside there. Mm-hmm. Why it took 30 years for Karras to get revenge is anyone's guess, since Andoheb explains in the beginning that getting shot wasn't that serious and that Karras was fine, too. They really jumped through a lot of hoops to bring in a new, younger cast without throwing out all the previous story. It's only been two years... I guess they didn't really want to throw it all out and start over, but they but could have. But they could have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Hmm. And then two years later, Cars ain't dead again. What? The mummy back again. Go- well, maybe he is dead because this one's called The Mummy's Ghost, 1944. Um,. You like ghosts? I like ghosts. You know what's better than ghosts? Marshmallows. Marshmallows are good. <gasps> you know what we Look found? Look at that. Lucky Charms marshmallows. Lucky. Everybody likes Lucky Charms cereal because of the marshmallows. If you don't like the cereal so much. And those marshmallows aren't really marshmallows. They're crunchy little. They're hard little They're things hard like little what you get in a hot stuff. chocolate powder. Yeah. And these are blue moons and pink hearts and yellow stars. They're actual marshmallows. And there's no difference in flavor between the colors. They're basically just multicolored marshmallows. I mean, if you like marshmallows, they're fine, but they're really kind of nothing special. I'm slightly disappointed. I don't like them as well as regular marshmallows. It's like, About the same as far as I can tell. Yeah. It's a gimmick. It's, yeah. it's cute. It's fun. They're not that expensive. Well, you know, if you've got a party or something and you want, don't mm-hmm. want plain white marshmallows, these yeah. are nicer and you can looking. Make, and you can make candies out of them. And they got a recipe here, chocolate-covered drizzle marshmallow pops, where you put them on a stick and cover them with chocolate. And... Okay, you know what else would be good covered in chocolate? Me? The Mummy's Ghost oh, from 1944. Ghost. Directed by Reginald LeBorg. Written by Griffin Jay and Henry Sucher. Stars Lon Chaney Jr. and John Carradine and Robert Lowry. One hour, one minute. The first Fez man, Endoheb, from the hand of the mummy, is back. Mm-hmm. And passes the torch yet again to another new Fez man. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he's got a line outside the pyramid. <laughs> Need another replacement again. <laughs> the new Fez man is now played by John Carradine. This bay mm-hmm. is the brother of the bay in the previous movie. Once again, he rehashes the story from 3,000 years ago in the rules for the Tana Leaves. He swears that he won't rest until Ananka and Karis are returned to Egypt. Hmm. We get a flashback explaining how Ananka was brought over to be in a museum, and the Karis cult brought the monster over to America. The professor explains Tana Leaves, which are extinct now, but then he says he has some. He explains in the college classroom that the mummy was real and he actually saw it. None of my professors ever said anything that interesting. No, none of mine did. Tom talks to his Egyptian girlfriend, Amina. She gets upset every time the topic of Egypt comes up. That night, the professor cooks a bunch of tunnel leaves because he read the recipe Mm. on an ancient chest. Mm. The the mummy comes shambling in. Amina wakes up and follows him. Karis kills the professor and drinks the tunnel leaf juice. Amina sees him and faints. The next day, the police find Amina asleep outside and question her, but she doesn't remember anything. The sheriff knows it's the mummy again, and he sets out all the townspeople to patrol the town. Looking for that mummy. Yeah. We switch, switch locations to the Scripps Museum, where, all the, where the curator explains about the Ananka exhibit. They all move on, but Bay stays behind. He hides out until the museum closes. He calls in Karis, and when Karis touches Ananka's body, it crumbles to dust. Bay says her soul has entered another form. Amina wakes up screaming. Huh. 
Could it be her soul as Amina's? Could be. The sheriff devises a plan to trap the mummy. They're going to dig a big pit and lure him in with tunnel leaves. Well. <laughs> Karis goes out yeah. to find Amina. Amina <laughs> wakes up and meets him in the front yard. She faints again and he picks her up. Tom's dog follows them. Her mother sees this and calls Tom. She then runs to the sheriff and all his men go off looking for them. She runs up to the sheriff and this big pit's right in front of her and they're like, stop, stop. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> yeah, it almost, caught, almost caught a cleaning lady. <laughs> <laughs> the dog leads Tom to Karis and Bay atop some kind of large elevated abandoned factory. Bay confirms that Ananka has returned. Bay hears the voice of the mummy's ghost just like Frankenstein's ghost. That's where the title came from. Telling him he should marry Ananka. Okay. Mm -hmm. The voice tells him to use the tunnel leaves on her and himself as well. Karis comes in and sees all this, and of course he kills Bay. Mm, Nobody gets the girl but him. Because he's like that. Yeah. The rest of the town shows up. Karis picks up Ananka slash Amina and climbs down the ladder. As Karis lumbers along toward the swamp, Amina begins to age rapidly, which is never explained. Mm-mm. Karis walks into the swamp, and the two of them both sink below the surface, never to be seen ever, ever, ever again. Yep, no more mummy. John Carradine is very good here. He doesn't look even remotely Egyptian, but he's creepy, creepy and looks good in the role. And this is the only movie in the series where Karis the mummy shows any kind of emotion. Mm -hmm. Amina was a real girl who was born and had parents and everything, I assume. Still, her soul was that of Ananka, so we're supposed to be okay that she died at the end. I guess. As far as we know, just... the real Ananka was not evil. She was a queen. No, she, she had was... an affair with this guy on the side, and then she yeah. died. Mm -hmm. And then all this other stuff happened. No proof that the Ananka was evil, nor have we ever seen her hurt anyone. Her only real crime is being loved too much by Karis. Mm -hmm. you know, be careful who you loved. You might get brought back from the dead in 3,000 years and lost in a swamp. Mm, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, you notice all of these has a new Fez man coming to town. Mm -hmm. The mummy causing trouble. Mm -hmm. There's a girl involved mm -hmm. that the Fez man eventually falls in love with and wants to marry for his own. And then the mummy kind of sort of turns on him at the end. Mm -hmm. Formula. Formulaic. Which brings us to 1944, the same year. The Mummy's Curse. Mm -hmm. Two mummies, one year. Mm. They're just cranking these babies out. Uh, I find no reference that they were actually made at the exact same time or not. That, that kind of thing happens now. Yeah, yeah, it does. Director Leslie Goodwins, written by Bernard Schubert and Leon Abrams, stars Lon Chaney Jr., Peter Coe, Virginia Christine, 60 Minutes. It well, opens with a musical number. <laughs> a bunch of people with random accents hang out in the nightclub and talk about things. You notice the accents too, right? There's Mexicans, there's Germans, there's like gypsy it's type people. It's such a weird it's, mix in that bar. It's Where? like they put out a call to a bunch of extras. Hey, if you got some kind of weird accent, come yeah, on down. If you're if you're quirky, come and hang out in this bar scene. <laughs> Uh, they're singing and having a great old time. It's a fun scene. The conversation yeah. turns oh. to the mummy that caused all the problems 25 years ago. I think they're basically, they're supposed to be gypsies. So this is, we're up to 1995 now, but it's still the 1940s. <laughs> well, it's 20, this is 25, 25 years, years, years since after the previous, after the previous movie. one, which was 70-ish. And that so one was 30 the, years after, yeah. It's 1995-ish it now, and it's still the 1940s. <laughs> <laughs> by all, by everything, I mean, you know, nothing at all futuristic. <laughs> the scene changes to the government man who intended to drain the swamp. <clears throat> Maybe it's in the 2010s. Hmm. Draining the swamp. Draining the swamp. <laughs> Political joke. Yeah, but this is a literal swamp. Oh, okay. That, yeah, wants to, wants to make it farmland, make it develop it. The men Money say the, the swamp is haunted. Mm -hmm. Dr. James Halsey and a new Fez man come to talk to the boss. They have been sent to recover the bodies of Karis and the Princess Ananka that were lost in the swamp many years ago. Hey, and I have a bit of fun trivia. The woman, young lady, playing Princess Ananka, she is uh, Virginia Christine, who went on to become Mrs. Olsen in the Folgers commercials. Mrs. Olsen, Mrs. Olsen and her. Oh, I barely remember those. Percolating your coffee. Yeah, that was mm. classic, though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> a man runs in and says one of the men has been killed. Yep, Antoine's lying in a pit with a knife in his back. Hmm. There's also an empty imprint of a man's body. 
The bulldozer might have uncovered a mummy. Who could it be? That night, Fezman goes out in his boat and meets a follower. They, goes to a, they go to a hidden ruined monastery above the swamp. Two sarcophagi... Sarcophagus... Sarcophagi... Sarcophagi. Is it sarcophagi? I think so. Sarcophagi. Sarcophaguses are stored up there. <laughs> Look, two coffins. Yeah. One of them holds Karas. The other is empty. They still have to find Ananka. Fezman explains to his henchmen about the Tana leaves. We get uh, another flashback another to Ananka flashback. and Karas' story. Good, because we don't know this story. <laughs> the scenes are reused from the hand of the mummy. The human version of Karas doesn't look anything like Lon Chaney Jr. Because they used flashback footage. Yeah. From that other movie. Yeah. Where he wasn't in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Would it have cost that much to have done one or two scenes with him in it? It was cheaper this way. There's way well, too much exposition and talking here, but eventually they shut up and give Karas his tan leaves. Again, in an hour movie, like 15 minutes of it is flashback and exposition. The caretaker yeah. comes in and tells them they all have to leave, and Karas kills him. The next day at the construction, sh- construction site, Ananka gets up. She starts out shambling slowly, but the sun rejuvenates her. The mud washes off, and she looks like a regular girl lost in the swamp. The only word she says is, Karis. Karis eventually tra- tracks her down, but she runs away from him. She passes out on the side of the road, where she's picked up by a couple and taken to the doctor. And what a difference a little bit of sunshine and water makes, too. I mean, yeah, she doesn't look anything like just him. A, huh? She doesn't look anything like Karis. Yeah, yeah. Well, even from when she wakes, first, first gets up, she's just filthy, and, and then... She's wrinkled and mummy like and, and then not. And then not. But even her hair and makeup are perfect and her clothing and yeah. Oh, don't get into freshen the clothing up, again. Freshen up. Freshen like when you up. pull the steak out of Dracula's bones, he comes up wearing a tuxedo. Voila! <laughs> Karis <laughs> comes within inches of killing the couple, but they get lucky. Mm-hmm. Ananka wakes up and now she can speak English. Sunshine. <laughs> she Sunshine. Can't, <laughs> she can't remember who she is or why she's there. She starts working Dr. Hauser, working with Dr. Hauser as a lab assistant. She can read, write, and understand his scientific notes. Hmm, how's that work? Well, yeah. Fast learner. Uh, yeah, how does Sunshine. that work? Yeah, Sunshine. Yeah. She knows all about Ananka yeah. and Karis, but doesn't realize that she's connected to any of that. That night, Karis comes for her again, and again she runs. The doctor tries to intervene and dies for his trouble. Mm -hmm. After a lot more talk, he finally catches her. He brings her to Fezman, who gives her Tana leaves. Fezman's servant stabs him in the back, and then Dr. Halsey knocks out the servant. He wakes up, and the two fight as Karis comes in. Karis recognizes that the servant has broken his vows and goes after him. Karis kills the servant just as the monastery collapses, killing them both. And Did we'll, something blow up somewhere? Why is the monastery collapsing? Because it was old and crumbly, and Timing. He, he bumped it. And then they go in the yeah. other room and find Ananka. She's turned back into a mummy herself. The end. Yeah. 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 They don't get better, folks. In the flashback, they, they don't even they have Lon on. Chaney playing Karas. It's clearly not him playing Ananka's high priest. Also, 25 years have passed, but it's still only 1944. The accents and racial stereotypes used in the film would not fly today, not even a little bit. The character, Cajun Joe, sounds really, really Italian. (laughs) It's me, a Cajun Joe. (laughs) With his authentic Cajun accent. Yeah. (laughs) Would you like a Cajun meatball? (laughs) (laughs) And it's funny that Karis' right arm doesn't work until he needs to carry something. Then it works just fine. It works fine fine then, yeah. It's Mm. baking it. Mm. And I'm really, really glad we binged watch these, as they're all four so similar that they're all going to run together in my memory very quickly. And they sure do in mine, too, yeah. Mm -hmm. They're worth watching, but I can definitely see why people burned out on The Mummy. Yeah. Each one was just a rehash of the previous one, and as bad as the Frankenstein movies eventually became, at least they tried to do new things with it once in a while. And and this is, you know, The Mummy's an iconic character, and a classic, and 1932 is a classic movie. And Lon Chaney was a fairly... Big name at the point where these last couple movies came out. By the last one, I was like, please stop. (laughs) Well, supposedly there was one of them where Chaney had to carry the girl down the steps. And he was so drunk all the time he couldn't do it. And I lost track of which one it was. I think it was the third one. And then it was even worse for the fourth. He had some issues with alcohol and 
he was yeah, well one, known with that. Yeah, and one day on the set, he was so toasted that he couldn't carry her and walk at the same time. Yeah, and they brought in a double to do it. She's like, I don't but want then, him walking down the steps then, in this condition. I mean, the whole thing could have been a double. He, he's unrecognizable. Bob from accounting. Yeah. 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 There, there was one scene, I think, in the third movie, maybe it was the second movie, where you can see him kind of acting, and you sort of get the image that it's him in there. Yeah. But mostly yeah, not. It didn't have to be. Yeah. Waste, waste of star talent. Yeah. Yeah, it was. So overall, good? Are you glad you saw the four movies? I'm glad I saw the four movies, just so I can say I saw all the Universal Mummy movies. <laughs> but they really weren't necessary. Yeah. Yeah. The first... Well, the first one with the comedy one was really not that great. The second one was better. But yet... Okay, I'm going to change my initial review. <laughs> the second one is the best one. And if you see the second one, you don't need to see the first one. Yeah. So that's probably the one we should recommend, is the second one. Yeah. The Mummy's Tomb. The Mummy's Tomb from, from 1942. 1942. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Any final mummy words? No. I don't think so. Nine le Nine leaves. Nine. Only Nine. I want to see what happens if he drinks the whole pot. Mm. It never happened. He tried. And that's our show. Thanks for joining us. Stop in during the week at horrorguys.com for news and horror updates, to comment on this podcast, or to contact us. Check us out on Twitter at, at Horror Bulletin, and find our group Horror Guys Podcast on Facebook. And of course, everything is in written form at horrorguys.com. Now I'm Brian. I'm Kevin. And that's the skeletal hand of the mummy waving goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 See ya. <laughs> <laughs>